mean, we went from like homosexual to gay, then queer. Well, I don't I mean, use that word because I think that word's a put down, and I wouldn't put somebody down because of their sexual preference. Well, I think that, you know, people, that, a lot of my gay friends use it. And, and actually, I think it's more of a description of somebody who's like kind of strange. But I, I can hardly keep up with the language. You know, it changes all the time. And, and really, it's not, we, we like to think of it not as a, so much as a lifestyle, but a life. Not, you know, like a hairstyle is different from hair. But, uh, right. Uh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> I think what a lot of people are worried about is they somehow have the feeling that people who are homosexual, who love others of the same gender, that somehow you are cruising all the time. I had a conversation on radio a long time ago with a young guy in Chicago, a, a gay man, and I said, do, do, when you go into a bar, is every guy fair game for your uh, 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 libido? He rapacious. Said, uh, uh, We're rapacious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And he said, of course not. He said, any more, he said, when you walk into a room and there are 24 women, are, are you sexually attracted to every one of them? I said, of course not. Right, we're, we're fairly discerning. And yeah. I think, sometimes I think if I had as much sex as I'm accused of, I would be very busy. I would be a busy You certainly busy would not guy. have time to be here tonight. I would not You be could here. not do highways would, in Santa no, Monica for no, 12 nights. No, I would nights. be in bed right now. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not the case. I mean, we have huge, very, I, I think one of the, the most dangerous and frightening things about gay people is that we're really quite normal and boring in a lot of ways i mean we have jobs we do yeah. we do the laundry it's you know it's kind of not a quite exciting I mean, there are wide extremes we have you know gay republicans and we have you know street activists but there's a wide range of a continuum of gay people when did this change in terms of acceptance in clubs you know there was a time when you would have to go on and talk about your boyfriend when, right. when did all this begin to change the six late 60s early 70s um, I would say early 70s it mm -hmm. started to change um, and I think it's the effect of you know all the organizing and 25 years since Stonewall and I, I think that you know people who are maybe 10 years younger than me have a sense of themselves as gay that's very different from my sense I mean there was the word lesbian and gay was not really used much I didn't identify myself that way. I, actually, when I was in college, I was like just to the left of Newt Gingrich. I was very conservative, <laughs> you know, and that I'm even out talking about being a lesbian now is, sh is sometimes shocking to me. But I think it's just like really? there's a sea change, you know, that, that's happened, that, that more and more people know the word and that we can talk about it. And I think that people are really quite tolerant and they long to hear about other lives. I mean, I, I think that we, you know, do a disservice to people if we don't aim high. You were a ca you were a Catholic uh, schoolgirl, yes. right? I was a Catholic schoolboy. Lots and you, of material, and I'm sure there's a lot of material. <laughs> but you and I both know the way we were brought up in the Baltimore Catechism, and we know that the sixth and ninth commandments are the most important commandments of all because they They're have to starred. do yeah they, they have to do with homosexuality. How did you get past the guilt that must have accompanied uh, the realization that you were? homosexual, that you were attracted to other girls in, in school, because you know what the Bible, and, and not the Bible, but the, the Baltimore Catechism and the nuns and sister schools said about anything that was a right. deviant from the norm. My God, we were going to burn in hell fire. You know, well, I, I, don't do that, you'll go blind. How about just don't need glasses, you know, <laughs> the, old, the old joke. <laughs> Well, I was, is, which one is it? Nine, don't covet your neighbor's wife? That's right. That was like talking right to me. I thought, oh, <laughs> here I go. You know, I just like, and I would be like looking next door at the bathing suit of the, you know, and so, I mean, I knew I was kissed right there. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I, but, you know, you just, I, there were a lot of things I rejected. I do love a lot of the spirituality that was involved in the Catholic Church. Sure. I think that got me through the, I mean, but, you know, it's so confusing. Like, because there you are, you, uh, all the guys are in dresses. The priests are all in dresses, well, and I'm worried. Right? Yeah. yeah, and uh, you know, I was a little worried about that. My brothers would go to confession and, and get you know a hundred ejaculations for their penance, and that was confusing to them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, so there were like these built-in confusions, and so you just got to take very what good. you need and go on. Yeah. And we'll have to explain uh, ejaculations <laughs> the in the context of, of Catholicism <laughs> as we continue with Kate Clinton. We'll be right back with Kate and all of you on the toll-free exchange if you're so inclined. Right after these messages. Bravo. <laughs> very, very good.